Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. <laughs> uh, welcome back, guys. Got another great video for you guys today, man. You know these LeBron James fans, man. You know the deal on this channel, though, man. It's all about setting the record straight, stopping the lies, stopping the narratives, guys. Once again, holding these guys to a standard and not allowing these guys to rewrite history or bend reality, man. And in this video... Uh, I want to uh, talk about some a video that I saw, a clip that I was sent to me. And uh, it, it, once again, the LeBron James fans, guys, and the things that these people say out loud. And, and this is what I'm talking about with people. I'm talking about the platforms. People have microphones now. Everyone has a fancy setup. Everyone's got a studio. Everyone's got a podcast. And these idiots out here, these goofballs who don't know NBA's history, they haven't been watching basketball from before 2010. I told you, they don't know anything before 2010, these guys. They know nothing. When you hear him speak, they, they, it's, it's, and this guy's talking about, he's crying about the time that Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller got into it. And Michael Jordan didn't get ejected, but Reggie Miller got ejected from this game. And he's like, yeah, man, see what I'm saying? Yeah, Reggie Miller and Michael Jordan, they get into it. Michael Jordan throws a punch, and Reggie Miller gets ejected, not Michael Jordan. And he was crying about that, going off and talking about how that's, that shows that Michael Jordan gets preferential treatment and how Michael Jordan was, was, was getting carried by the NBA. He was making some nonsensical state argu arguments. But it's the LeBron James, man. They have to bring these arguments out of left field. They have to make these things up, fabricate these things. Once again, guys, create the narratives. And we're going to talk about this video, man, because I'm pretty sure we could, we're going to bring up some stuff about LeBron James. He's been helped out. And as usual, guys, I want to thank you guys, everyone across the world, everyone across the states, guys, has been supporting my channel. Once again, guys, I'm truly humbled. Thank you to all you guys out there. Shout out to everybody in the membership. Thank you for all your continued support, guys, for real, man. You guys reaching out to me, it means a lot. Thanks, guys. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, I just wanted to do a brief video, man, on this clip that was sent to me that I saw with the LeBron James fan club member on one of these stupid podcasts that these guys have. Like I said, everyone got a microphone now. Everyone got a podcast. I ain't got nothing fancy. I'm trying to hopefully get something. Maybe I can get a show, like I said, guys, and have some people call up. But these dudes with their podcasts and, and these nonsensical things that they say that don't make any sense, I swear, the, the LeBron James fans, and it's mostly their fans. There are bad fans out there from all kinds of fan bases, man. But the LeBron James fans, like I said, they have these loud voices, but they don't say anything. They don't do their homework. And they once again, they, they, they don't want to live. They refuse to live in reality. They're in this made-up world where they don't remember any of LeBron James' faults, anything that's happened in his career. I'm telling you, they'll call themselves LeBron James fans, but they don't remember anything about his career. I'm not even a fan of LeBron James. I don't follow him. None of this stuff. And yet and still, I remember all the things that this happened in this man's career, whether it's been positive or negative. So I can recognize LeBron James as an all-time great, an NBA Hall of Famer. But I can also understand and once again recognize that I cannot have LeBron James as a top 10 player. And there's no way in hell LeBron James has carried himself with the class, the honor, the integrity and this is why he hasn't earned the respect to be mentioned in that conversation. To me, that's obvious. The LeBron James fans don't want to live in that reality. So when I see this clip and the LeBron James fan, he's going off. Now, you guys probably remember that clip. If you're a Michael Jordan fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about, guys. Hold on. Excuse me. <clears throat> the, the Reggie Miller-Michael Jordan confrontation, I believe it was 1993, regular season game. One of the players for Indiana, can't remember who it was, goes up for a layup attempt. Michael Jordan goes to block the layup. The guy misses the layup. Reggie Miller right behind Michael Jordan tips the ball in. As Reggie Miller's coming down, his momentum carries him into Michael Jordan. He pushes and shoves Michael Jordan on the baseline out of bounds. <clears throat> so quite naturally, Michael Jordan being the competitor that he is, that he was, he got back at Reggie Miller, you know, they got and they bumped into each other. It looked like they may have even headbutted each other. They were face to face and Michael Jordan was pretty upset. Now, this had been carrying on uh, earlier on in the game. So this wasn't just like this happened in that little snapshot. They had been going back and forth. The game, Indiana and Chicago, guys always get chippy. OK, so let's remember this off the jump. If you remember them days back in the 90s, the Pacers 
and the Bulls, it was always like this. All right, Reggie Miller and Michael Jordan, it was always like this. God, this is why I said, as 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 far as Reggie Miller broadcast, I told you I've lost respect for this man. He his broadcasting is terrible. He he pumps up the, the he says nonsensical things. Let's just leave it at that. But as far as him on the basketball court, what I remember about Reggie Miller is the man was a true competitor. He was out there battling against Michael Jordan, man. And like I said, he would give it and he would take it, but he would also give it, man. And like I said, he was a, a scrappy dude, man. You know what I'm saying? He's like six foot six, whatever he is, six foot seven. He's like 180 pounds. You guys seen Reggie Miller, man? He's soaking weigh 150, 60, 180 pounds, man. But once again, he was a true competitor out there. He was scrappy. And like I said, man, he played hard. That's what I remember about the, the battles. But they get back and forth to it. They pushing and shoving. Michael Jordan looks like he may have thrown a punch at Reggie Miller. It looked more so like a punch to get Reggie Miller off him because Michael Jordan never grabbed Reggie Miller. When Michael Jordan approached Reggie Miller, it looked like he was just going to get into the face and maybe, like I said, bump into him, chest bump him. It was Reggie Miller that grabbed Michael Jordan with both arms. And then it proceeds, Michael Jordan proceeds to try to get Reggie Miller off him when Reggie Miller's always grabbing on and holding on to him. Reggie Miller said he threw a punch at Michael Jordan, didn't hit him, but Michael Jordan looked like he hit Reggie Miller in the face, whatever the case may be. If Michael Jordan would have been ejected, whatever. But Reggie Miller was ejected. Michael Jordan was not. And this LeBron James fan is talking about, oh, oh, look at Michael Jordan. He didn't get ejected. He didn't get ejected. It's the NBA. This how it was. Michael Jordan this, Michael Jordan that. And I've told you guys, many times on this channel, all the great players, all the star players, they get star treatment. Absolutely. So once again, let's not act and pretend that Michael Jordan didn't get treatment. All the star players got treatment. All of them. Not just Michael Jordan. And I've done the videos. Michael Jordan's teams never got advantages in free throws like LeBron James' teams. Michael Jordan's teams were never plus 500. They were barely ever plus. And if they were, it was negligible. I've done the videos on it, guys. You know. So... The Bulls weren't getting favorable calls like LeBron James' teams do. And personally, Michael Jordan wasn't getting a lot of calls. And he was getting calls a call against him way more often than LeBron James. Look at how many fouls per game he gets called versus LeBron James throughout their career year by year. The total fouls all time, still LeBron James has not passed Michael Jordan. That's insane, guys. He's played how many more games than Michael Jordan? 300? 400, I don't know. Never called fouls against LeBron James. Look how many times LeBron James drives in offensive fouls. Never called. Michael Jordan gets foul called against him because he was more aggressive on defense. He gave effort. LeBron James is standing around. And like I said, on offense, they're not calling the fouls. So when we think about that advantage, he didn't get that advantage on, on LeBron James. His fans don't talk about that, though. But when we talk about this incident with Reggie Miller, and this guy's crying, yeah, Michael Jordan didn't get ejected. Reggie Miller didn't. He threw a punch. Let's, let's immediately understand the LeBron James and humble him here. Because once again, they've forgotten. Can someone tell me what Draymond Green, uh, Draymond Green did to get ejected from the 2016 NBA Finals? The LeBron James fans in the back. Where y'all at? What did Draymond Dr Green do to get ejected from the 2016 NBA Finals? What did he do that was so egregious? To get suspended for a game. A game five, nonetheless. Not game one. What did he do? Can't answer it. Once again, did Draymond Green do anything to get ejected from a suspended? Excuse me. Not even ejected. Suspended from the following game. Not ejected from that game. Nothing happened to him in that game. But they suspended him for the following game. Does that LeBron James fan want to talk about that? Does he want to mention that about LeBron James and the treatment he gets from the NBA? He's crying and moaning about a regular season game in 1993 that Reggie Miller was ejected from that Michael Jordan didn't get ejected from because Michael Jordan threw a punch at Reggie Miller and Michael Jordan didn't get ejected. When everyone there in the arena was there to see Michael Jordan, we all know that, and Reggie Miller, once again, like I said, played his role. Was it fair? No, maybe it wasn't fair. How many times have a star player get a technical foul called against them or not called against them when another player did get a technical foul called against them and they give it to you, oh, oh, I didn't see it. It's always the second guy that gets caught, right? So once again, there's not Michael Jordan or isolated incident from Michael Jordan. 
And I asked LeBron James fans, what did Draymond Green do? Did Draymond Green deserve to get suspended? No, we've always talked about this kind of stuff. That was a, a finagling. That was a rigging of the finals to help LeBron James' team. And I love when LeBron James fans say, yeah, well, LeBron James dropped 40 in the game without him and then 40 when he came back. Yeah, 40 in Cleveland. In Cleveland. With the rest of the Cavaliers bowling out. Kyrie Irving, Richard Jefferson was bowling. Shumper, J.R. Smith, Tristan Thompson was out of control on the boards in that series. They don't win to these guys. Oh, LeBron James 40. Once again, the momentum swing was already there. Draymond Green was out. The suspension. What did he, what did he do, do to get suspended? Nothing. He should have been there. In Golden State for that game five. Wasn't there, though. And let's, well, we're talking about Reggie Miller. Let's think about the LeBron James fans, and let's ask you guys this. You guys remember that play in the 1998 Eastern Conference Finals where Reggie Miller two-hand shoves Michael Jordan in the chest to get open for the game-winning shot, which he makes. He's Reggie Miller. Did Michael Jordan cry about a foul call there? Was there a foul call on Reggie Miller there? No. And I'm not saying there should have been a foul call. But once again, if we want to talk about crying and moaning and you want to try to rewrite the history of these LeBron James idiots, this is what they do. They rewrite history and bend reality. Then we can easily go back and say that two-hand shove by Reggie Miller to free himself up for that shot was easily an offensive foul. Clearly. Once again, Michael Jordan did not flop. He didn't throw himself on the court, which he probably could have to try to sell it. He didn't cry and moan the press conference about it. He didn't make an excuse. You know LeBron James would have been crying his butt off. Yo, man, that was a foul. I, I, that, was, that looked like that was a foul. That looked like that was a foul to me. That would have been LeBron James, man. Crying and moaning, making excuses. I played good defense. Uh, Reggie shoved me. I was in position. I, I didn't know you were allowed to do that in the NBA. That's some stupid stuff Le LeBron James would have said. Michael Jordan come back to the, came to the press conference and said what? They still got to come to Chicago. It don't matter. Indiana, Utah, you still got to come to Chicago, man. You're coming through us. You're coming through Chicago. That's what Michael Jordan said. No excuses. And then the man went out there and guaranteed a game, a game in game seven, guaranteed a, a win in game seven. Guaranteed it. So we win in game seven. We winning. Don't worry about it. He ain't crying more about the push off. But was Reggie Miller called for a foul? No. Nope. So what was more impactful? What was more important, guys? A meaningless regular season game or just a regular season game in 1993 where Michael Jordan wasn't ejected and Reggie Miller was and this guy went on a whole rant and crying about? Or the 1998 Eastern Conference Finals end of game scenario, the Bulls are only up by a point and Reggie Miller throws Michael Jordan off him to free himself up for the game winning, for the game -winning shot. What was more important? That game in 98, right, guys? In the East Coast Finals, no call was made. Once again, not saying there should have been a foul call, but there was no foul call there. No one cried about it. Michael Jordan didn't flop about it. And the LeBron James fans won't bring that up, right? They won't say that Reggie Miller got the treatment there. Didn't Reggie Miller get treatment? Reggie Miller was a star player. Star players get star treatment. So he was able to push Michael Jordan and free himself up for that shot because that's what Reggie Miller does. That's part of his game, freeing himself up like that, running guys off screens. You're allowed to get away with certain things from the referees if you're known for certain aspects. You're, you'll be allowed to get away with a little bit more on the defensive end if you're known as being a stout defensive player. You get the benefit of the doubt, so to speak. Reggie Miller get the benefit of the doubt in that call. The LeBron James fans won't cry about that, though. You see what I'm saying, guys? This is where they get exposed, man. They don't remember the history. They're always trying to rewrite it. And they're holding Michael Jordan to a high standard. So they're crying about Michael Jordan not being ejected from a regular season game. But they won't talk about Michael Jordan not getting a call in 98. Right? They won't talk about LeBron James getting Draymond Green suspended in the finals. But he's crying about a regular season game with the Indiana Pacers. You see the standard, guys? There's no standard for LeBron James. Once again, you guys know to do on this channel. We must continue to set the record straight on these fools. All these idiots out here talk on a microphone. 
Call the Sunday show. Any of you fools out there, any LeBron James clown, call the Sunday show. Y'all a bunch of scaredy cats. Scaredy cats. Come on, you cowards. Where y'all at? You crying in the comment section. You won't call the Sunday show. Put your face on camera. Call up the Sunday show. Be a man. Stick your chest out. And say what you got to say. Y'all a bunch of clowns. Got nothing to say. Because there is nothing to say. And you know you guys can't touch me. You guys can't stand with me. Not on my level. I ain't spitting the facts now. For a minute. Calling you clowns out. And all you guys do is hide and cry in the comment section on your keyboard. So once again, why don't y'all go outside and get some sun. And start doing your homework. Open your ears, man, and shut your mouth and listen. And once again, like I told Gilbert Arenas, you should be paying me for the education I'm giving you fools. Bunch of goofs out here, man. Soft, feminine dudes, man. Always crying. Oh, Michael Jordan didn't get ejected, but Reggie Miller did. You ain't got nothing to say about Draymond Green. You ain't got nothing to say about 1998. You ain't got nothing to say about all the free throws LeBron James team's been getting all these years. That Michael Jordan got nowhere near those kind of calls. Nothing. Nothing on that level. I've done the numbers, guys. Not even close. Michael Jordan's team was always on the bottom in the league, guys, and free throws attempted. Always. Look it up. Bronze James fans don't do these things. They watch highlights, and they listen to guys like Nick Wright, J.J. Reddick, Gilbert Arenas, Kendrick Perkins, Colin Cowherd. These are the people you're listening to? Malika Andrews? Who are these fools? Brian Windhorst and Dave Magnuman? These are the reporters? These guys are a bunch of goofs, man. No integrity. No honor. And they don't know the history of the game. They don't. They did not watch this stuff, guys. And they don't know it. Because they don't want to know it. They're being disingenuous. You guys know the deal. LeBron James has been getting help his entire career, guys. They won't talk about how many times he travels. They won't call that. They call Michael Jordan for, for, for traveling routinely, guys. I've seen games where he got called for multiple times in a game. Two, three times. They don't call LeBron James for carrying the ball. The man will blatantly just travel. They won't even call it. Offensive fouls, they don't call it. That's why he hasn't passed Michael Jordan fouls yet. But he crying about a game that Reggie Miller was ejected. They ain't crying about the Draymond Green ejection or suspension, I mean. Was Magic Johnson ever suspended from a game in the finals or James Worthy suspended? How about Clyde Drexler or Jerome Kersey, Terry Porter? When, when was he suspended? What, what year did Kevin Johnson get suspended from the finals game? Or Tom Chambers or Danny Ainge or Dan Marley? When did any of those guys get suspended from a finals game? To help Michael Jordan out. When was Gary Payne suspended or Detlef Shrimp? Sean Kemp, remember that game he got suspended in? I don't remember that. You guys remember the games that Carl Malone was suspended for or John Stockton wasn't allowed to play in? Jeff Hornet said, or Byron Russell. These guys weren't, they weren't there. Antoine Carr. None of these, no one was suspended for a finals game. But this happened for LeBron James' team. That's right for his team. Plus all the other injuries on the Warriors that they love to talk about for Michael Jordan's team, but not for LeBron James' team that he went against. They won't talk about all the injuries for the 2020 Heat in the, that fake bubble tournament. They won't talk about the injuries for the 2016 Warriors. They won't talk about the injuries for that. They just want to talk about the injuries for the 2015 Heat, uh, Cavaliers. Oh, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love hurt. They never talk about any other team's injuries. They won't talk about the injuries for Michael Jordan's team that they were dealing with, him, the injuries that Michael Jordan had. The jam, the severely jammed toe in 91, so severely jammed that he cut down the, the sneaker down the middle. Guys, go look at this, this film of it. I believe it was before game four. He had it slit down the toe. I can't remember, either game four, game three, whichever one it was. And he tried to play the game, and he couldn't. He had to go back to the full toe and deal with the pain. Severely jammed toe on his foot. No excuses. He wasn't crying about it. No one even knew about it. He didn't talk about these things. They asked him about it at the press conference. He blew it off. They were talking about the severe sprained ankle in the 92 of playoffs when he came down the cameraman on the baseline and twisted his ankle up. They didn't cry about this. He didn't make excuses. Or the wrist, the, the wrist injury in 93. That's why he's wearing the wrist of uh, the wrist strap in 93. There's no excuses. Why right? Scottie Pippen's bad back in 98? The flu game in 97. There's always something going on. There were guys hurt. Rodman was dealing with injuries. Ron Harper went down in the 96 finals. 
with the ankle. Like, what are we talking about here? Guys get hurt. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar went down in 80. And Magic stepped up. Guys got hurt. It happens. Guys get in foul trouble. But no one gets suspended. Suspended for a finals game. It happened for LeBron James' team, guys. Fans won't talk about it, though. He's out here worried about Reggie Miller being suspended in a regular season game because Michael Jordan threw a punch and he didn't get suspended. This is what they're doing. This is where they go with their research. They won't actually look into the game. They won't actually look into the history of the Reggie Miller versus Michael Jordan. They won't actually look at LeBron James' history and all the times that he's been hooked up. How many times he's given dirty elbows to guys, nothing called. Isaiah Stewart chasing him around the court because LeBron James is a dirty player. You guys know the deal, man. Continue to educate these clowns, man. These goofs. I'll catch you guys on the next one.